Hi, my name is Mr. D and today I want to take a look at an SAT function problem. So we have let f be a function defined by f of x equals x plus 3 over x minus 1 for any x such that x does not equal 1. And we're trying to find which of the following is equivalent to f of x minus 1. So for this example, since we're trying to find f of x minus 1, what we need to do is we're going to make a direct substitution for f of x. So instead of reading this as f of x minus 1, for the next line we're going to write x plus 3 over x minus 1 minus 1. All we did was replace f of x with x plus 3 over x minus 1. But with these problems in general, whenever we're subtracting a, a fraction and a whole number, the goal is to turn the whole number into a fraction with a matching denominator. So for the next line, what we want to do is, we have x plus 3 over x minus 1. But instead of writing minus 1, we're going to express 1 as x minus 1 over x minus 1. And the reason why we could do this is because when we have the same quantity in the numerator and denominator, that fraction reduces to 1. So now for the next line, we're subtracting two fractions with the same denominator. So we have x plus 3 minus, and I'll put parentheses because at this step here, most students will make a mistake with the sign change, and they won't distribute the negative. But if we put parentheses, this will take care of subtracting the entire expression x minus 1. So we have x plus 3 minus x minus 1 over x minus 1. So now for the next line, we could distribute this negative. And our next line will read x plus 3. And now we have minus a positive x. We're going to negate positive x, and we get negative x. And now we're going to negate negative 1, and we get positive 1 over x minus 1. So now at this step, x minus x will cancel out. And now for the final answer, in the numerator we have a positive 3 and a positive 1, which gives us positive 4, over x minus 1. So for this problem, our answer is 4 over x minus 1. Now the reason why I emphasize those parentheses, just to look out, is because a lot of students, when they mix this up, they'll do something like x plus 3 minus x, but they'll leave this as minus 1. So if this were a minus 1, then we would have 3 minus 1 is 2, and we would have 2 over x minus 1 instead. So this is why choice D is there as a trap, to make sure that you understand this step of distributing that negative. But now, let's look at a second solution. Let's say for some reason that we were stuck on the algebraic steps for how to find choice B. What we could do is, we have to be able to set up the expression x plus 3 over x minus 1 minus 1. But if we were unsure at this step how to manipulate it to choice B, what we could do is we could choose a random value of x. Let's say x equals 5. So now if we have x equals 5 and we plug into this expression, we would have 5 plus 3 over x minus 1 we would replace with 5. So we have 5 minus 1 minus 1. And now 5 plus 3 is 8. 5 minus 1 is 4 minus 1. And now 8 divided by 4 is 2. So we have 2 minus 1 and 2 minus 1 is 1. So now we would take x equals 5 and plug it into the answer choices. And let's say we plug it into choice A, we would get something that doesn't match 1. We would have 5 plus 2 is 7 over 5 minus 1 is 4 and 7 divided by 4 is not 1. But if we plug it into choice B, notice we have 4 over x minus 1. So for the next line, if we plugged in x equals 5, we would have 4 over 5 minus 1. And 5 minus 1 is 4, so we would have 4 divided by 4, which equals 1. And the 1's would match, telling us that our answer is choice B. So if you are unsure of or not trusting your algebra, you could always plug in for an example like this. Okay, well this is going to conclude this SAT function problem. Thank you all for watching and I hope this video was helpful.